You're very welcome to Football Pass on what has been a big day in Scottish football. Earlier this morning, Neil Lennon tendered his resignation as Celtic manager. Well, I'm delighted to be joined now by former Celtic manager, Gordon Strachan. Gordon, let's not do a post-mortem here. Let's instead focus on the legacy that Neil Lennon leaves behind. And it is an impressive one, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, I, I, I think what Neil would be worried about just now is what people think of him. Not outside the Celtic family, but the Celtic fans, everything like that. I know he, I know he feels he's let the club down, which you, you, you kind of... You always get as a as a manager who has to move on, but more so um, being a player, being a captain, being a winning captain, being a winning manager, because you see the delight that you give these people, the excitement you give them, the uplift you bring to their life, but also when it comes to the other side, it when there's a negativity about it, you feel responsible, and what he's done, as far as I can see, is he's taken it all upon his own shoulders. Um, so that is a problem for him at the moment. You got to remember he's had, he's had to deal with walls all his life and obstacles, which is he's, which he's got over. That's that's what's made him the man who can manage Celtic through all sorts of trouble, um, because you have to have this character to be able to manage Celtic. And if you don't have knockbacks, you can't be a character. So that's where where Neil is at the moment. But what's got to happen? Similar to to. I don't, don't take this, it's not the same as Tommy. Tommy, Boy, Tommy Burns is probably the best loved Celtic player of all time um, because he was a genuine fan. Da, da, da. And when Tommy was a manager, he always, sent me, he always felt that this was his thing about letting the fans down. And Neil picked up on that as well when we were in the coaching staff. Um, so uh, Tommy felt bad about this, really bad. Um, but over the years, because Tommy didn't win the league and uh, he won a cup, but he lost in a cup final. But when all said and done, he's probably the most loved Celtic person of all time. Um, and that's what's got to happen to Neil Lennon. He's got to come back that people will forget this last six months and they remember all the, the good things that he's done. And, um, uh, and then... He will have this, you know, there'll be a rebirth, in, in, no, uh, sorry, Neil. Um, so that'll be, be fine. And um, that, that's got to happen. I know that's got to happen. And, and, and a lot of what, if you look at the history of the last 20 years, has been involved in most of the history. You know, the historic moments of winning thing when Martin were, it was captain when I was there. He was a manager when they beat Barcelona. You think about that, you know. And, Okay, you're getting beat with lesser teams at the moment, but he's won these games. He's been involved in these games. And um, he, he's touched them on. He's, and, and I think he's touched them in a way that they, uh, they think he is a fan. And if you're a fan, I think you're hurting just now, be in his shoes just for an hour today. I don't care what anybody feels like in the Celtic fans at this moment. Nobody feels as bad as him. And I actually think of a, of a guy on the night um, who was who summed it up a bit, which was good. I liked it because he summed it up and said, listen, the, um, the, um, the Celtic fans in general, the, the most of them, could see he was hurting. We could see he was hurting. And, and, and I think what's happened now is, as I said, the, the, the guy was good. He said, Neil was hurting. He was definitely hurting. And it was hurting them to watch, see Neil hurting. It was like a friend who was hurting. So I think that'll be... There'll be more about that in the coming coming days about how the, the, the Celtic fans seen one of their heroes hurt them. and they, did, they didn't enjoy it to be fair they didn't enjoy seeing somebody hurt them. and they didn't enjoy somebody who had to come in front of the press and explain this, this, this and that there cannot be a worse time to be a manager or anybody Boris Matt Hancock um, Nicola Sturdy, get up in front of and speak to people at this moment in time when the world's no great where there's these people trying to catch you out and it's all pent up inside you. Normally when this happens, you can go and speak to friends, go and have a walk, have a beer with them, have a meal with them. Take away this pressure, some sort of pressure, alleviate it and say, you cannot do it at the moment. And you always have to deal with this and go home and sit. And pair of has got to watch them. So it's a horrible time to be in, the, uh, you know, for people asking questions, you, 
in the public eye. I know it's a horrendous time for everybody. I know that. Um, you just need to walk about the streets and see that how horrendous it is for people. But the fact is, being in on your own, where some most times I could have went and said, how are you doing, Lenny? I want, you want to go for a beer? You want to do this? Couldn't it be done? Um, so that, that's how it's such a hard time for me at this moment in time. Yeah, he's been under so much pressure for such a long time now. And you know him so well. You're his friend. Once the dust settles, Gordon, do you think there'll be, you know, a part of him that's relieved to have a sense of clarity and, and I guess he can then assess his own future and move forward? At, at the moment, at this moment in time, I think there'll be a lot of, from my point of view, when, when it's happened to me before, there's this relief that it's, it stops now, this, 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 this non-stop questioning, your integrity, your intelligence, your, your, your honesty, it's non-stop where people, and some people are out to humiliate you and, and the media, and, and a lot of that is gone. So, it, 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 and then after a few, couple of weeks, I think I'm, I'm missing my job. And then that that's, that's becomes another phase. And after that, you get around to doing some other things. So um, I hope he's no loss to the game, but the, the problem is oh, where do you go after this? It's not easy leaving the Celtic job. Players find it not easy. You know, what a big club like this, even the, the, the club that I took over, um, the players who left, apart from Stillian, who Stillian Petsov, nobody done anything. It was too much of a body blow to go and do it again somewhere else. Stillian was young enough to go and, and have this drive to go and do very well at Aston Villa. And um, there's somebody else with stubbornness. And that stubbornness is coming very handy uh, over his the last 10 years with Stillian. Um, so, um, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to see what he want, what he want to do with himself um, to go somewhere else. Because he had a shot at Bolton. He didn't enjoy that. He didn't enjoy being away. And, for, and the strange thing then is that after a, another period of time, you miss the madness. <laughs> you miss this madness of the west of Scotland. Um, you go, oh, this is a normal life. How do, I, how do I deal with it? <laughs> I wish some reporter would ask me a stupid question and they could go and tell me, shut up, you know. Um, so you miss that part of it as well. But, and we look at it and we go, wow. What, what, what a period, I mean, um, um, that he's had at Celtic. You know, he's up there with the, the top people that's ever played for the club, managed the club, coached the club. He's been everything. Yeah. A brave man as well. You know, um, he, he always had his own mindset. He might have went about in a group of lads, but he always had his mind. I think he was the one that gave me, when I first got to Celtic, that went open book and went right okay someone already made up his preconceived ideas what I was he just went let's see what you've got and I'll back you and because of that and then that's that's his that's his he's clever he's stubborn and he, he and he's honest so anyways then that for me I'll be I'll be grateful um for him especially when I got to Celtic can we just talk a little bit more about his achievements? You know, what are what are the, the biggest highlights for you, Gordon? Just give me a couple of Neil Lennon's biggest highlights. Um, it has been a difficult the, the, Yeah, I think uh, winning the league last year um, and having to deal with it, the great Rangers run. And Rangers have been playing well over two years. Yeah, they've, they've got better and better over two years. Nobody, nobody in the previous eight years has ever had to deal with a side as good as them. Nowhere near as good as the Rangers team that you're seeing just now. A million miles, the first Rangers team that come up were bang average, uh, they're completely different. So I liked that, I liked what he did last year. The Barcelona night was just magnificent. I mean, truly magnificent. Grown men crying. <laughs> so I like these two things. I like, you know, so that would be in the management. I like, you know, and um, I like the way he dealt with the man, the stupid manager taking him off in his last ever game with Celtic. <laughs> you know, that was me, by the way. Um, 
and dealing with that and uh, huge in his last game and I take him off <laughs> and this is good, he doesn't think, what am I doing but anyway done it and still being able that night to understand the problems I had at the same time it has been, um, and I'm not making excuses here. I mean, it's it's been obviously a very difficult season for Celtic, um, yeah. but it has been an unprecedented year in football in general as well, hasn't it? Strange, strange times. But, but what we cannot do, and I think it's only feels take that away from Rangers. I think Rangers have been terrific, you know, and they're not just shown in the league; they're shown in Europe, um, and there is. Um, when it's I was doing, there's times to look at everything that's went on at Celtic over the last 20 years and, and how we got to there and how we got to now and, and think about it as a, as a time for people to sit down and really think what, what, what's happened over the last 20 years. Is there things we could have looked out for? Is there things are doing well? What can we do better? I think it's a, it's a great time now to think about it, but enjoy what you've just done. Um, and whatever you think, and people think it's about style and that, it's all about winning. <laughs> it's all about winning, I'm afraid. We all talk nonsense at times, um, fans, uh, but it's all about winning. And as far as I can say, when we go back to Neil, that his life is all about winning. And, it, and at times, he said to take some flack, and, and, and as a manager or player and captain, you put your family aside at some time, which is wrong, I know it's wrong, but that's what he's done. Um, for the for the Celtic family, um, so it's a, it's a time for reflection, as you say, and a time to look forward and time to enjoy what's what's went past, and, and then take off in another direction. There, Gordon, thank you so much for for giving us your unique insights this evening. Really appreciate it. Thank you.